Welcome to the American Dream Team Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode three of the American Dream Team Podcast with Ahmed Yaksin. I'm Matt Skye. Ahmed is a seasoned Tampa-based immigration attorney helping clients nationwide with deportation defense, green card applications, asylum claims, and more. Ahmed, thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. So let's jump into visas. Ahmed, can you introduce us to the concept of investment visas in the U.S. and explain the types available to foreign investors? There is literally an alphabet soup of visas in the United States. Almost every single letter in the alphabet is taken with a type of visa. There are a bunch of visas that you can actually use to remain here in the United States through an investment visa. There are a couple that allow you to do it on your own, a couple that you actually have to have an employer sponsor you. Some of them allow you to get a green card in the United States. Some of them don't allow you to get a green card in the United States. But the, the two most prominent investment visas are the E-Visa and the L-Visa. The E-Visa is actually one of my favorites. I do them all over the world, literally. I've done cases in, in the UK, done cases in Egypt, Jordan, done cases in Turkey, done cases in Bahrain. The E-Visa is based on a treaty that the United States has with certain countries. So treaties that it has with about 46 countries. The last one that I know of that we added to the list is Israel. It allows you to apply for a visa either here in the United States or in your country. And it will allow you to get it, to get it for five years or two years, depending on where you apply for it. And allows you to come to the United States and open a company that either trades with the United States, that has substantial trade with the United States, or a company doing business in the United States, which is generating money and it's not a marginal enterprise, as the government likes to call it. So two, the two parts are the E-1 visa, which is the one for traders, and the one for the E-2 visa, which is the one for investors. The person has to come here to the United States to actually run the company to be an executive, make sure that they actually, you know, be, be own more than 50% of the stock for them to be able to, to direct the direction of the company. The nice thing about the E-Visa is that there is actually no minimum and no maximum amount of money that you need to invest in the United States. I have done them for as low as $17,000, and I had a client who invested a million dollars into his E2 enterprise. So that's the really nice thing about it. The you don't have to have an affiliate overseas that allows you to come to come to the United States to open a branch, for example. And we're going to discuss that when it comes to visas. So you can have a standalone enterprise in the United States and you can come here on the E2 visa. The second visa that I was talking about is the L, the L visa. There is L1A and L1B. The L visa is for managers or for people with special skills, managers or executives of a branch of the company that is overseas as trying to open an affiliate or a branch in the United States. And that person comes here to either establish that company and run it, or that person has what's called specialized knowledge in the company's processes for them to be able to come here and run that they do that, they use that specialized knowledge in their work here in the United States. Now, both of those visas allow employees to come under, under the E and the L visa with a specialized knowledge under the L without a special, specialized knowledge really for the E2. So it allows people who are investors and it allows in some instances, some employees to actually come to the United States and, and be able to work under that visa classification, even though they're not the actual investors. So these are the two most prominent investor visas that I run into in my practice that allows people to come invest in the United States and get a visa, which is a different from a green card, get a visa to be able to stay in the United States, run their company and work. Now, we just touched on this, but maybe could you reiterate for us some of the primary benefits and advantages of an investment visa versus other types of visas? Money talks, right? 
So if you're if you're coming to the United States to invest invest a hundred, a hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars, you probably are going to have better a better luck getting the visa overseas than trying to apply for what's called like for a visitor visa or some visa for you to come to visit. So I'm not saying that every single investment visa is a slam dunk, but you probably have a better chance getting that visa overseas or here in the United States if you're spending money and they're seeing that you're becoming you're be- becoming an investor in the United States, you, you know, hiring people, employing people here in the United States. So the government might actually give you a little bit of an advantage, you know, with an investment visa over other types of visas that you're trying to get, like a visitor visa, for example. This other advantage is you're actually able to work in the United States. So you get you get a work permit that's what's called an incident to status, which means you don't even have to apply for a work permit. The visa that you have on your passport is your work permit. So you'll be able to get a social security number. You'll be able to get health insurance. You'll be able to you will be counted as legally present in the United States. You you won't have to get deported if you know unless you fall out of status. So you will have and it will give you at least two years for you to be able to to be here in the United States. The third advantage is some of those visas actually allow you to apply for a green card. So for example, the L1 visa that we were just talking about, there is a classification for a green card called an EB1C classification that allows international managers to be able to apply for a green card as long as they have a job with that company, they will be able to sell petition for a green card, which is a lot of people actually are running after that green card, right? So the third advantage is even if you have an L1 or you have an e- an e-visa, if you have an affiliate company overseas, some of those visas actually allow you to be on the road for permanent residence. So these are the three main advantages of doing an investment visa compared to just a run-of-the-mill visitor visa or any, or or an F1 visa because they allow you to work, they allow you to be here in the United States for a longer amount of time, and they allow you to apply for permanent residence if you're able to do it under that visa classification. Can you share with us a notable success story? Where you helped an investor obtain an investment visa successfully? I probably, in in my fifteen years of practicing, I probably lost one or two investment visas, and and it was because they didn't follow what I asked them to do. So one of the most notable ones that I did was for for an investment, literally of seventeen thousand dollars, and we did one for for a car detailing company here in Tampa, and we were able to actually get him get him his visa and get him to stay here in the in the country. We switched him from an F1 visa, which was a student visa for him, and he got his E2 visa here in the United States. Another one is one of my favorite ones was an investment in a in a grocery store, a 1.4 million dollars that allowed him to actually get the E2, and we were able to switch him through a process called an EB5 petition to switch him to get a green card here in the United States because of the amount of the investment. So these are the really the the two that come to mind right now. How complex is that switching process? Very, very. And switching if you're not an international manager and if your investment is very is very low, you have to go through what's called an EB5 investment investment green card. And there's about five to eight years right now, depending on where you're from and, and where where you're where you're from and where is your investment. It's about five to eight years wait for you to get that green card. You don't have that wait if you're doing a green card, for example, as an international manager. You don't have to wait for the five to, to eight years. Those are some of the faster faster green cards to get. That's, a, that's number one. Number two, the amount of investment that you have to do to go through the EB-5 process is astronomical. I mean, we're looking about... 500 to 1.4 million dollars and a lot of people don't have that amount of money to invest so if you do have that investment you have to prove so many things for you to be to be able to go through that eb5 process 
But if you have the right attorney like myself, I've done them so many times, you will be able to actually get that green card. It's a very complicated process and the wait time is two to three years or so, but it's worth it because at the end, you will be able to actually get a green card, which a lot of those investors want to get. So in your experience, are there any particular strategies or approaches that have been most influential in securing favorable outcomes for investment visas? Following your attorney's advice, don't change your investment strategy after we filed the petition because it's going to be impossible to actually get over that and the government does not like that. If you only have $500,000 to invest and you're going to go broke, for example, for if you invest that $500,000 into a green card, I tell people I wouldn't even apply for that for the green card for them because honestly it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense you probably lose your your shirt you know over trying to get a get a green card one of the things that i absolutely love to do when we're talking about an eb5 petition is do it invest into a piece of land for example that and the person will be able to build their business on that piece of land and if anything happens at the end of the day we can sell the piece of land and get the money back for and that counts as part of the investment. And fortunately, when it comes to investment visas, not just the EB-5, the more money that you put into it, the better. You're going to have to show that the amount of money that you're investing is actually enough to produce enough money to help you and help all your employees and help you pay for all of your employees. That's why the government asked for financial projection. So if you're, if you're, investment is very low, that is going to be a very hard case to win, especially if you tell them that you're going to hire five or 10 people down the road. If you're just investing a low amount and amount of money is going to be an issue. So those are some of the strategies and some of the advice that I give to my clients. But of course, to get more wisdom from me, hire me and I'll be more than happy to guide you through all. Seems like good advice. Any any additional tips for foreign investors applying for an investment visa in the U.S.? I mean, you have a lot of experience with successful clients here. Stay away from food. So if you a lot a lot of people come here and say, "Well, my cooking is absolutely fantastic." Okay, does that mean people are gonna like your cooking? I don't like food investment or investment into restaurants unless the person is buying a established restaurant that has been around for a very long time. And I've done them successful with your people who actually bought pizza parlors that have been around for 30 or 40 years. And that, and they actually, the previous owners sat down with them and stayed with them for six months to actually train them on all aspects of the, of the business. That, that would be okay. But if you are, if you're going out of your field, trying to get something invested into something that you don't know what to do, please stay away from it and talk to, a financial advisor or a business planner to make sure that you do the right thing and you invest your money in, in the right investment and make sure that you actually get the tax returns and all the financial documents if you're buying an existing business and make sure that you're not getting scammed. But stay in your lane, do things that you actually will know how to, how to do and you should be okay through your investment and your investment just lasts you a long time. I know food is a notoriously difficult business. Are there any industries you recommend generally? Service industries, I've done them for cell phone stores. I've done them for franchises. I love franchises because you, you are going to have some guidance from the franchisor to know how to actually run the company and all of that stuff. Absolutely love franchises. Even I've done them for franch food franchises and they were actually very successful like a I did one for a subway, a chain of subway restaurants, for example. Those are okay, but a standalone food business will probably be an issue. Anything related to service actually is a fantastic investment idea. And Ahmed, as we wrap up, if you had one key takeaway for our listeners, what would that be? An investment visa is a great way to get on the road to your American dream. You're going to be able to bring your whole family with you. You're going to be able to work, you're going to be able to make money, you're going to be able to apply for permanent residence. So if you are a person who's trying to come here to the United States, and you have the ability to invest money into the United States, that is a great way 
to begin your American dream. And it will put you a long way on that journey, especially if you invest a lot of money into the United States, because the United States wants, wants you to help our, our citizens and actually help, help people. And the United States wants you to contribute to the economy in the United States. And that will put you on, on, on an advantage over a lot of the other people who are trying to come here to the United States. So investments work and they put you on your road to your American dream. I think that's a great point to wrap on. Everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to the American Dream Team podcast. For more information or to schedule a strategy session with Ahmed Yaksan, visit AmericanDreamLawOffice.com or find them on social media. Ahmed, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and leave us a review in the comments.